Hello everybody once again. So, this is the lecture number 2 that I am talking about solar radiation. Uh, I was telling you that uh, I have also uploaded on Moodle uh, this kind of files. You now, this is the word file available to you and you can use it later also. This file actually gives details about the lecture itself. So, it will talk about the contents of the lecture solar radiation. Okay. For example, what is the objective of this lecture? So, what are the basics of solar radiation? the sun and earth moment it will talk about. Okay, it will give the possible formulas, what is the learning outcome for example, the idea of this lecture is to understand the basics of solar spectrum, define various terminologies related to solar spectrum, appreciate the sun earth moment and its impact on the earth climate, okay, understanding concept like a declination angle, apparent motion of the sun etcetera. So, these are the objectives of this lecture. It will also define and there are some problems which you can see these problems are already solved problems that you can get. For example, for example, uh, uh, this is the problem to calculate the zenith angle for air mass 1.5. So, this we will learn actually, this is the part of the program and where you can read more about this. Okay. So, this you can read more uh, animations are there on the websites, uh, you can uh, read uh, from the book etcetera and then the summary of this. Okay. So, this is the word file. Uh, I have put lot of efforts to prepare for all of the lectures, okay, so that uh, you when you are going to teach this course, you can actually use this uh, learning objective sheets to actually plan your lecture and you know deliver uh, as per the plan. Okay. So, all these sheets are available. Now, le let me go directly to the, the presentation. Okay, so, uh, so, let us start. I, I hope everybody is ready, all remote centers. Okay. So, this lecture is about uh, about solar radiation, right? Because when we are talking about the solar photovoltaic technology, the fuel to the solar photovoltaic technology is the radiation, okay? And we should know how much is the radiation falling so that we can find out how much is the energy that is generated by PV module. So we should know what is the input to the module, uh, and in order to find out, we also should know how the motion between the Earth and, uh, and the Sun is happening how the intensity is changing, why why there is a season, why there is a summer, why there is a winter, what should be the ideal inclination angle of a module, so that you can collect the maximum possible energy from your module. Okay. So, these are the basic questions that we want to answer in this particular lecture. Again be ready with your questions at the end. Topics to learn for example, is how much solar radiation we receive from the sun. How, how does sun moves around the earth apparently, okay. actually the earth moves around the sun, but how the sun moves around the earth apparent that is referred as apparent motion. How to install a solar PV module to collect the most solar radiation possible. So, these are the three main question we, we are looking at. This is the basic information about the sun that it is a very large sphere of diameter transfer uh, of distance having a distance transfer 11 meter from earth having a diameter of 10 to the power 9 okay, and it is having a black body uh, temperature of 5250 degree centigrade that is the temperature and the power that is received in the range of uh, petawatt or uh, 10 to the power 7 watt. The earth uh, is revolving around the sun in a not a circular manner, but a elliptical manner and there are two focal point of ellipse. Uh, uh, ellipse and uh, earth is act, uh, the sun is actually one of the focal point, but the eccentricity of the ellipse is very small and therefore, you almost feel that uh, that the motion is almost circular, but not exactly circular. Okay, so, this is what happens, uh, we can quickly go forward. Uh, there is a term what is called the solar constant, this is the amount of solar radiation received outside the earth atmosphere and that value is a constant, it is about 1367 watt per meter square. Okay. That is the power density, you can say this is power density of, of the solar radiation received outside the earth atmosphere. Okay. Now, because the earth is not moving in a circular motion around the, around the sun, it is moving in a elliptical motion. So, therefore, the distance between sun and earth is also not constant. Okay. So, when earth is here, the distance is larger. right? when earth is here distance is smaller. So, because the distance will change and therefore, the intensity of the solar radiation will also change. So, 1367 is a average value of the solar constant, but it actually varies and 
this variation can be calculated using this formula. Okay, very simple formula ISC is actually 1367, ISC dash is what you want to calculate for any given day. Okay. Uh, this day is given by here n and come back to that. In the solar radiation, we, uh, we need to whenever we do the calculation, we talk about the day of the year. Okay. So, in many formulas, this day of the year come, it will be represented by a symbol n n is the day of the year. So, when you take n equal to 1, it actually it means January 1. Okay. When you take n equal to 2, it means January 2. When n equal to 31, it means Jan 31 and so on and n equal to 365 should mean December 31st. Okay. So, this is what the n represents, n represents the day of the year. So, that is what has been shown. So, once you put the value of n, you can actually solve this equation and you can find out what is the solar radiation outside the earth atmosphere. Okay. Remember, I am talking about it is outside the earth atmosphere only. It is called the extraterrestrial solar radiation. Okay. We may skip this, but the basically this is showing that because the sun is a kind of a, a body at very high temperature, it radiates the energy in the various wavelength and this wavelength uh, can be estimated, the power density at each wavelength can be estimated this by the Planck, Planck's black body radiation. We will not go into the details of that, uh, but we can find out. And eventually what happens is uh, the spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum is a very wide spectrum covering large uh, range of frequencies and wavelength. Uh, the solar spectrum is particularly concentrated around this band. Okay. The solar spectrum consists of a ultraviolet radiation, a small portion. It consists of a visible uh, spectrum, a small portion, and it consists of a infrared radiation. Okay, so the solar spectrum consists of this part. Now, at this point, uh, uh, we should uh, now start thinking about the spectrum or the the way energy is coming to the Earth, and this energy comes in the form of photons or the quantum of energy. Everybody must have heard, uh, known about this. And the energy of the photon is given in terms of uh, the h and the nu. Okay. Uh, this parameters, when you put this value of parameter and when you put the value of uh, nu uh, uh, or the frequency, which is uh, c by lambda, c is the speed of light and the lambda is the wavelength. So, basically, when you actually uh, uh, see, uh, simplify this uh, equation, you will get the simplified expression that is equal to uh, e is the energy of the photon incoming photon in uh, uh, is equal to 1.24 divided by the wavelength in the lambda and this wavelength should be given in micrometer and this energy will be given in electron volt. Okay. So, when we talk about the solar spectrum, we can talk about the spectrum in terms of the uh, wavelength of the photon. So, solar spectrum will have the wavelength you know varies from about uh, 400 nanometer, 380 nanometer to be precise and it will go all the way into infrared where the wavelength is in the couple of micrometer. Okay. So, 4 micrometer, 3 micrometer or we can talk about the energy. Okay. How to find out the energy? You can use this formula to find out the energy. Okay. Many times we refer to the photon also by the color. Okay. So, we say it is a blue photon, we refer to it as a green photon, we refer to it as a red photon or we refer to it as an infrared photon. Okay. So, when we say it is a blue photon, so the, what is the energy of the blue photon? Uh, the wavelength of the blue photon. Okay, so, this is one calculation that you will also do in the tutorial. So, basically uh, when we say the blue photon, we are saying that uh, the wavelength of the photon is uh, or the lambda of the photon is 400 nanometer or we will say 0 0.04, uh, 0 0.4 micrometer. I want to calculate the energy. So, energy is 1.24 divided by uh, lambda and it should be in micrometers. So I should divide it by 0 0.4. How much is this? How much this will be? If you divide 1.24 divided by 0 0.4, you will get about 3.1 electron volt. Okay, so your energy about that. So this is approximate number. More precise calculation you can do using the calculator. So you can do this. Okay, similarly you say I have a uh, let's say green photon. We'll have let's say wavelength of green photon is 550 nanometer. Uh, green photon will have the 550 nanometer wavelength, you can say it is 0.55 micrometer and similarly you can calculate the energy of the green photon using this and you will you'll get that this number is again about 
uh, more than uh, 2 electron volt or 2.5 electron volt. Okay. So, you can calculate this in this way you can actually represent a photon by its wavelength. Okay. You can represent photon by its color and you can represent photon by its energy also. Okay. So, the energy of the photon in a solar spectrum varies between higher side that is ultraviolet photon will have energy of about 3.5 electron volt and the lower side as you go from ultraviolet to the blue light to the green light and the lower yellow and the red light and infrared radiation the energy decreases. Okay. Wavelength increases energy decreases. So, the at the infrared uh, side the energy of the photon will be only about 0.3 electron volt. Okay. So, the range of photon energy varies from lower side 0.3 electron volt higher side about 3.5 electron volt. Okay, so, then uh, I was talking about the, the solar uh, radiation uh, and we have, we have learned about the solar constant which is the uh, which is the solar radiation outside the earth atmosphere it is called the extraterrestrial solar radiation. But what we are interested is in what reaches the earth surface okay, what we are interested in what is the solar radiation available in earth surface. So, while the solar radiation it passes the atmosphere it actually goes through certain interaction or it may not go through interaction. So, if it does not go through any interaction with the atmosphere it is called the direct radiation. Okay. So, if the light is coming directly it is called the direct radiation. If the solar light comes as a ray comes and it gets scattered because of the particles in the atmosphere it may be gas particle, it may be a you know dust particle or it may be some other molecules of CO2, uh, O2 etcetera uh, water vapors it may result in scattering and because of that the angle or the direction of the light reaching the surface will change and therefore, you have the diffuse radiation. Okay. So, this is the direct radiation and you have the diffuse radiation. Sometime what happens the ray coming may get absorbed in the atmosphere and may never reach the surface then it is get absorbed. Okay. So, then we have two types of radiation one is called the direct radiation coming to the earth surface without any interaction and the other is the diffuse radiation which is coming to the earth surface by some interaction and therefore, the angle of the radiation is not fixed. The light that comes inside our room through the windows are actually a diffuse radiation that comes inside. Okay, so, uh, this is one thing direct radiation and diffuse radiation and the sum of the two radiation is the total radiation falling on a given surface and the sum of the two radiation is called the global radiation. So, okay, so you normally when you want to find out uh, we have the what is called the direct radiation plus diffuse radiation and the sum of the two is a uh, global solar radiation. So, normally we are interested in the, the global uh, solar radiation. Okay, there is one other terminology that we should use here and learn here is kind is the distance that is travelled by the rays in the atmosphere. Okay. So, when, when we are talking about the solar radiation outside the earth atmosphere means the distance travelled is 0 and therefore, uh, the distance travelled by rays in earth's atmosphere is called air mass A m. Okay. The distance travelled by the uh, rays on the earth atmosphere is called air mass <coughs> or abbreviated as A m. This is the one term which we will use many times now onwards. So, please uh, note it carefully air mass is the distance travelled by the solar radiation in the earth surface or uh, earth atmosphere. Okay, so, when you are talking about solar radiation outside the earth atmosphere distance travelled is 0 and therefore, the solar radiation is referred as a air mass 0 radiation. When the sun is exactly vertical on the head top of the head then the distance travelled by the sun rays is exactly equal to 1 air mass okay, thickness of 1 air mass and it is referred as air mass 1 okay, and the corresponding to the that is referred as a air mass 1 spectrum solar spectrum which is directly coming when the sun is exactly on my top of my head is a air mass 1 spectrum. But we know that the sun ray sun is, is very for a very small amount of time sun is on the overhead normally the sun is in the morning it has a very low angle then it comes to the overhead in the evening it goes to the other side and therefore, most of the time the distance travelled by the sun rays is more than 1 air mass. Okay. So, if you if for example, if the angle made by the sun rays with respect to vertical is theta, okay. then the distance travelled is this, okay. this is the distance travelled and this distance travelled air mass is given can be given by 1 over cos theta. Okay. Very simple trigonometry you can also find out that the distance travelled at any angle is given by uh, uh, a m 
1 over cos theta. So, once you know your theta, you can find out what is the distance traveled uh, by the. So, okay, if this is our surface, this is small sphere, and this is my vertical, in if the rays are coming at some angle like this, okay, this is my theta. So, I am interested in this distance, okay. I am interested in what is the distance x uh, and uh, to y here, okay. So, this is my uh, distance and this is the air mass which is can be given by 1 over uh, 1 over cos of theta okay so once you know the theta you can find out the the air mass okay simple so i hope this is very clear to all of you because we are going to use this term air mass uh, several times so when air mass is zero i told about uh, so we are talking about the solar radiation outside the amount of solar flux or radiation is 1376 watt per meter square air mass is 1 which is overhead 1105, when is air mass 1.5, okay. this is corresponding to the angle which is of 48 degree with respect to the vertical. So, vertical is this, so if you make a 48 degree like this, then uh, then air mass travelled is 1.5 and at under that condition you get 1000 watt per meter square. And you, you might say many of you know already that solar PV cells and modules are actually characterized for 1000 watt per meter square of solar radiation. So, this is the standard radiation which is used for characterization. Okay. So, when you buy a solar PV module, the, the manufacturer guarantees you the module output is let us say module is 100 watt peak, they guarantee that module output is 100 watt only under 1000 watt per meter square air mass 1.5 spectrum. So, that is the importance of the air mass. The PV people use it for characterization and for the rating of the PV module also. When people uh, tell about the record efficiencies or the cell efficiencies, these efficiencies are for the air mass 1.5 spectrum. So, please take a note of that also carefully. Now, we have the global solar radiation and uh, global solar radiation is sum of the diffuse and direct and, and uh, normally there is 10 to 15 percent of the diffuse solar radiation depending on the sky. Okay. If there is a cloudy condition, your diffuse solar radiation will be higher, if the sky is clear your diffuse solar radiation will be lower. Okay, so, this is what is the spectrum we will get. Remember why we are doing all this exercise about the solar radiation, because first of all it is useful to know this, so that I know how my solar cell is working. Secondly, it is useful to know, so that I know how to install my solar PV module, so that I can collect as much solar radiation as possible. So, this is the uh, this is spectrum that you get, the line is the black body fitting the yellow curve is the actual curve outside the earth atmosphere and the red curve is the amount of solar radiation received on the earth surface. Okay. Here you have the watt per meter square per nanometer as a wavelength and x axis is a wavelength in nanometer. Okay. Now, you can see that there are these dips here and these dips as I said because of the absorption of the radiation in the earth atmosphere. So, here corresponding uh, uh, element is also written. So, water vapor absorbs at about uh, you know 1200 nanometer of 1400 nanometer CO2 absorbs also some per portion uh, and this is what is the spectrum that we get on the earth or surface and this is by the way corresponding to air mass 1.5 spectrum. This spectrum is shown here is air mass 1.5. Out of the total radiation we receive about 7.6 percent which is the wavelength 0 0.15 to 0 0.38 comes in the ultraviolet radiation, 48 percent comes in the visible spectrum. Okay. So, most of the solar radiation we receive is actually in the visible range starting from 380 nanometer or 0.38 micrometer to 0.72 micrometer, infrared radiation 0 0.72 to 4 micrometer 43. Okay. The question here is how can we measure this radiation okay. at a given time, how much solar radiation is falling on a earth surface, how can we measure this and in your experiment that you are going to do in the afternoon, uh, not this afternoon, but some other afternoon you will do, maybe today afternoon some people already will do that. Uh, we have provided you a solar cell uh, with the characteristic and the, the current output of a solar cell in a short circuit mode will actually give you the amount of solar radiation falling. In practice, how do we people measure the solar radiation in using a pyranometer. Okay. The pyranometer is a is a is having two glass domes, uh, uh, there is a metal uh, as a metal which is sitting there. So, what you do in the pyranometer is uh, uh, you have the uh, you have a metal sensor which is sitting there. Okay, uh, this metal sensor. Uh, then you have the glass dome, one and two glass dome. 
this glass rooms are there uh, to protect this metal from the environmental contact. Okay. So, when the solar radiation falls on this uh, detector, it heats up. Okay. So, the more solar radiation falling on it, more heating will cause. So, the temperature, the temperature of this plate will actually tell you how much solar radiation is falling. So, that is the idea of the uh, pyranometer. So, pyranometer work on this principle. Now, you can see that it can take the radiation from all directions. Okay. It can take this radiation, it can take this radiation, it can take this radiation or radiation can come from any other direction. Okay. What does it mean? Will it measure the direct solar radiation or will it measure the diffuse solar radiation or will it measure the global solar radiation? What should it do? It should actually measure the global solar radiation, because it can take the radiation from all directions. So, it will take the diffuse radiation as well as the global solar radiation. So, when we want to make a direct solar radiation only, then what we should do? We should avoid the diffuse component. Okay. When we want to measure the direct solar radiation, we want to avoid the diffuse component. That can be avoided if you have a long tube, the principle remains same. If you have a long tube, back side there is a metal sensor that is sitting which again the temperature of the metal is proportional to the radiation falling, but now because the tube is long any radiation which is coming from the other direction will not be collected and therefore, you will get only the direct radiation. It is called the pyreliometer. Okay. So, by using the pyranometer and pyreliometer you can actually measure the diffuse and direct solar radiation. So, this is I have already shown you how you can do the measurement in the pyranometer. Now, let us see uh, uh, how does the solar radiation vary okay, and some of the important dates, which will actually useful for us to find out the inclination of the solar panel for optimum collection. This we know very well that uh, earth is divided in the longitudes and latitudes. Okay. Normally, latitudes we go from 0 latitude to 90 degree north latitude from 0 to 90 degree south and in the, uh, in the log, uh, longitude we go from 0 to uh, 180 degree on either side. Okay, 0 to 180 degree east and 0 to 180 degree west. Now, the, so if this is my earth surface, this is my the plane in which around which this earth is moving. So, around which the earth is rotating. Okay. Now, my earth is, uh, it is actually inclined. Okay. It is normally it should be like this, but because my earth axis is inclined, it is actually like this. Okay. Earth axis is like this and what is this? This is the plane in which uh, there is a uh, motion is taking place between the earth and sun. Okay. So, this is the plane in which motion is taking place earth is here, it takes uh, rotates in this plane, but it axis is actually tilted. So, that is what we should note here that earth axis is tilted and this tilt is 23.5 degree. Okay. So, because of this tilt, there is an angle between the equatorial plane, equatorial plane is plane of the equator and the plane of revolution. Okay. The plane of revolution is one plane in which the earth and sun is always actually in this plane. Uh, and the equatorial plane is the plane uh, of the equator and this plane will make an angle. Okay. And this is the, the reason why there are seasons on the earth surface and this is the reason why you know winter you will get less radiation, in summer you will get more radiation and things like and let us try to understand that. Okay. This is one very nice schematic uh, which is available uh, uh, on the web. Uh, so, you can get important terminology for, for example here summer. So, you have the winter and the summer. See what is happening? This is the north pole here. I hope everybody can see. North pole is in the dark condition under this situation. Under this situation, north pole is in a bright condition. While this two days, in this two days, okay, which is called spring equinox and autumn equinox, the pole is just at the uh, bisection of a bright part and the dark part of the earth. I will come back to that. So, again this is the same thing, this is the equinox condition. By the way, there are two important dates. Equinox is the day when the day length is equal to the night length. Okay. Equinox is the day when the day length is equal to the night length. This happens twice in the year. Okay. When it happens? It happens the equinox is the day length equal to night, it happens in the March and it happens in September, March 21st, September 21st. Very simple. So, in this position the, the equator the plane of the equator is the same as the plane of the rotation, okay, plane of the revolution. Okay. So, basically equator is perpendicular, but there are other days when which the other line, the, the plane line here is the plane of equator and this is the plane of rotation. And let me uh, draw you and okay, so, this is 
uh, this is sun and uh, this is the earth. Okay. So, this revolution is taking place here, this is earth, okay. then this is the plane of revolution in which the rotation is taking place. Okay. Now, because my earth axis is inclined, okay, so normally it should have been like this, but axis is inclined, so actual north is like this. Okay, so, perpendicular to this, there will be a plane of equator. Okay, so, my plane of equator is like this. So, this is the angle that equatorial plane, this is equator plane, okay, this is the re, uh, uh, plane of revolution okay, and this is the angle. Okay. This is important that there is angle uh, that exists uh, like this. So, the on the day of equinox, this angle is 0, on some other days which is called the solstice, there is the maximum condition, this angle, uh, uh, this angle, this angle I have shown you, this angle can vary between, this angle can vary between 0 to 23.45 degree. Okay. It can be either plus 23.45 or it can be minus 20, okay. so it can become 0 also. Okay. So, this is the equinox is the day when the angle is 0 and the solstice is the day when angle is maximum 23.45. Okay. This solstice day occurs on 21st December and 21st June, okay. these are the two extreme conditions. Okay. Fine. How does it affect? Uh, so, here I have shown the various angles. So, when you talk about the equinox, okay, there is a March equinox, March 20, 21st. So, you have the uh, and this angle which I have shown you here by the this angle is called this angle is called declination angle, declination angle, okay. angle between the plane of revolution which is joining the center of the sun to the center of earth uh, with the equatorial plane. Okay. This is the declination angle, De declination angle is given in terms of the delta. So, delta value, the value of delta can be 0, it can be plus 23.45 or it can be minus 23.45. So, in the equinox day, delta is 0 as the position March and September. On other condition, the solstice day, you can see the declination angle is minus 23.45 in one situation, when is the equatorial plane is above. So, it is measured in this direction, so it is above the equatorial plane, uh, sorry, uh, above the um, revolution plane and in this case it is lower. So, it is plus 23.45. So, June is delta is plus considered positive in the June and in the uh, December it is considered negative and all other days it, it varies from 0 to 23.45 plus and minus side. How does the sun appears to move? Actually, it is the earth which is revolving, but we feel that sun is moving and therefore, it is called the apparent motion of the sun. How does the sun appears to move? The sun moves in a plane on a given day, this plane makes an angle equal to the latitude angle of the location. Okay. What I mean by this? This is very important to understand and we will we'll focus more light on this also for an observer who is sitting at location. Okay, so, so, this is the earth surface let us say and uh, I am an observer, okay. I am standing here how does a plane how does the how does the sun appears to move uh, up moves in a plane okay so what i what i showed you is that uh, this is the uh, normal to the plane okay this is normal to the horizontal surface this is the horizontal surface and this is the normal okay at any given location the sun moves in a plane always in a plane uh, which is fixed at an angle okay so, this is the angle which is with respect to normal and this angle is equal to the phi. Okay. Again, we use this symbol phi regu uh, very regularly, phi is the latitude angle of a location, latitude angle of a location. Okay. So, I am in Mumbai, Mumbai has a latitude angle of 19 degree. If you go to the south, uh, then the location uh, like Chennai will have the I think latitude about 8, 9 degree. If you go north towards Delhi, the latitude is 23 degree or so. Okay. So, the what, what I mean the sun moves always in this plane. Okay. So, in the morning when sun rises, sun is here. Okay. In the afternoon, in the 10 o'clock, it will go here, then it will go here. In the peak position, that is the noon position, it will go here. 
in the 2 o'clock it will come here, in the 4 o'clock it will be here and in the sunset will always occur here. Okay. So, sun always moves in a plane. Okay. So, if you look at the perpendicular to the east west, if you look at perpendicular to the east west, you will find that sun is always moving in a plane and the angle of this plane is equal to the angle equal to the latitude angle with respect to the normal. This is this is the important point to note. The position of the plane in which sun moves change in a different season. Okay. The second point, the first point is the sun always moves in a plane. Okay. So, I am looking at the east west motion, my sun is in the morning here, then it goes, goes, goes up. I am looking by the way perpendicular to the east west direction, so sun goes up and then comes down. But the position of this plane can change. How? What, is, what do I mean? I just let me go to your board. So, this plane, this position is actually in the, on the day of uh, on the day of equinox, okay. but when it reaches, so the position will become this, after some time position will become this and it goes to the extreme position, okay. the sun and this extreme position will refer to the uh, solstice day. Okay. Then plane will start moving back and come here and then we will start actually moving to the other side. Okay, it will start moving to the other side and here, so if one is corresponding to the winter solstice, the other will corresponding to the summer solstice. Okay. Now, this, uh, this plane which is, uh, this plane which is uh, depends on the angle of the location. So, if you are living at equator, the solar, the motion of the sun always occurs in a perpendicular. Okay. The sun is always here and this position of this changes with respect to observer. If you are in Mumbai, then this motion will occur at 19 degree. Okay. If you go in Europe for example, Europe the latitudes will be 40 degree 45. The sun will actually move in this okay. and if I continue this analogy, what will happen to the north pole? Sun will actually move horizontally in a horizontal plane and that I will show you some schematics. So, if you are at a equinox day, Remember what is the equinox day? Day equal to day length equal to night length, and you are at zero latitude. Zero latitude means equator. Then sun will actually rise here. It will uh, or set here. Or it will rise here, it will move here, go up and come down. So at the afternoon time, afternoon time sun will be exactly overhead. Okay, the, which means there will not be any shadow of this tree. Okay, there will not be any shadow of this tree. So, notice no shadow of the object at a noon time. Okay. This, this will happen on equinox day at 0 degree latitude. Okay. Now, at some other day what will happen? So, I have represented the same thing here at the equinox 0 degree latitude your observer you are sitting here morning sun is here before and afternoon it is here and the noon time it is here because the sun is exactly on top of my head the shadow is not there. Okay. Fine. Uh, at some other latitude, equinox means same day equal day length equal to night length, but at some other latitude, okay, not zero, not equator. Now you go to the towards the north pole, 20 degree. But I said the the sun will move in an angle equal to the latitude angle. Now this is the example of a 20 degree latitude. Okay, the sun is actually move in a plane which is 20 degree with respect to the normal. So, like this. Okay. So, now in this case sun is moving in this plane. Okay. So, starting at the observer before and afternoon here the noon position is here. Though we are day length is equal to night length equinox, day length is equal to night length, will there be any shadow of the object at the noon position? Question to all the remote centers, will there be any shadow of the objects at the observer in the noon position? And the answer is yes because the noon the sun is not exactly overhead it is at some angle okay it is some angle so there will be an uh, there will be a, a shadow here which is also shown here that now this tree will have shadow and you can continue this analogy okay so uh, i'll just so you can continue this and if you go to the north pole okay sun will appear as if it is moving in a horizontal plane okay it will appear as the sun is moving in a horizontal plane so this is analogy i hope it is clear to you uh, so, that was the day and now uh, the solstice day, okay. the equinox day when the day length is equal to night length, the solstice is the extreme position. Now, solstice day 0 degree latitude also, okay. 
uh, the sun is actually not overhead in the afternoon position. Okay, I will show you how. Okay, so first of all, I am talking at zero degree latitude. What does it mean? The plane is moving vertically with respect to observer. So if the observer, uh, the sun will be in the horizontal. So sun's positions are this. Okay, now this is on equinox day. Okay, what other day? What I said with respect to observer, with respect to observer, the position of the plane will change. Okay, the position of the plane is going to change. So uh, uh, the the plane will be here. In one case, in other case, okay. So in in case of winter, the it will be here. In case of summer, it will be here. Okay. So now in winter position, sun is here in the noon time. So it is making some angle. So there will be shadow. Same thing in summer position also sun is here. So with respect to observer, it is making some angle. So therefore, there will be shadow. <laughs> so this is how we can understand the motion of the sun in various planes under the various uh, locations also. So, that is what I am saying that if you are 0 degree latitude, same thing I have shown here, your sun moves in this plane, okay, then the plane itself moves as the time passes, the plane itself moves, goes to the extreme position, then it comes back equinox day, so this is the second equinox and then it goes to this side, comes to the extreme condition and then it comes back. Okay. Exactly same thing happens with the plane of the uh, plane in which sun is moving for all other locations in the world. Plane, the sun always moves in a fixed plane which is equal to the latitude angle and the plane itself can change with respect to season. So, this is what will happen. In one position, the extreme position is 23.45 degree this side. In other position, summer it will be 23.45 degree this side. Okay. This is example of a 0 degree latitude, but normally all the locations in India is having higher angles. Okay, so, in normally uh, uh, higher latitude angles, so normally our plane will move like this. So, at one place, it in one position it is like this, phi is the latitude angle of the location and then other location it is going to be like this and the other extreme position is this. Okay, fine, this angle is phi which is equal to the latitude angle. Now, this angle which is the extreme position, but as I said this, this angle can change. Okay, when the plane is near, this angle will change. And this angle is given by what is called the declination angle. Okay, the angle between the center of the sun to center of the earth plane and the equatorial plane is given by the declination angle. The extreme number is 23.45, but this can change. Okay. So, here it is the one case and then you can have the another case also. So, for example, so I am talking about a place in India which is having a, a latitude of 5, this is one angle. Okay. Now, uh, this plane position will change. Okay, so let's say this plane has now changed to this location. Okay, so angle with respect to no normal remains phi itself. Okay, angle remains phi itself with respect to normal. But now I am sitting here. Okay, my observer is a fixed at a location. The the only the position of the plane is changing. So I am sitting here. So now actually uh, the the at the noon time. So this is the noon position of the sun the angle made is this. Okay. So, this is the phi and this angle is delta. Okay. So, the total angle with respect to the normal at the observer location, total angle with respect to normal is phi plus delta. Okay. Now, the delta value will change. As I said, it can be 0, it can be plus 23.45, it can be minus 23.4. Okay. So, therefore, we should put a plus and minus. So, the total angle with respect to normal is uh, phi plus plus or minus delta okay? and depending on the motion of this plane, okay? depending on the motion of this plane which is shifting its position as per the season. So, that is what I showed here. Okay? Now, so the question is if I want to collect the maximum amount of solar radiation, how should I install my module? Okay? If I want to collect the maximum amount of solar radiation, how should I install my module? Okay. The, the simple answer is that your module should always be perpendicular to the rays. Okay. If your rays are coming this way, your module should be like this. If rays are coming from the top, your module should be like this. If rays are coming from this, your module should be like this, okay. which means that my position of my module should be changing all the time. From morning, it will be different 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Every minute, every second, it should be different. 
but then this is uh, this is called the tracking of the sun. You have to track the sun, but many times because of the cost reason, it is not possible to track the sun. Okay, you cannot do that, and therefore you would like to install a module at a fixed angle. Okay, you fix the module so that uh, you can get the maximum radiation under that condition. So, what is that condition that we need to find out? So, the, the condition is that uh, I want to I want to find the angle with respect to the now either I, so angle with respect to vertical is 90 uh, sorry phi plus delta okay or phi minus delta with respect to vertical but with respect to horizontal it is 90 minus phi plus minus delta okay so this is the angle that you want to this is the angle that you want to install your module uh, so that it will have maximum radiation in the afternoon time by the okay we are actually positioning our collector only with the afternoon time because afternoon is the time when you will get the highest solar radiation right so afternoon is the time we get the highest solar radiation therefore whenever we want to install a module in a fixed position we are always considering the afternoon time only okay so here is the note it says noon time position perfectly noon time so with respect to vertical if i have module install it phi plus minus delta i'll get maximum or with respect to horizontal 90 minus phi plus minus delta okay so this is uh, 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 so this is uh, where we will stop and i will continue this in the next lecture uh, but you can think about you can ponder about it this is my condition okay if this is my condition if this is my afternoon position right uh, then where should be my module installed okay so this is the let's say this is the winter season and this is the autumn season okay so in autumn season if i want to install my module it should be like this okay this is my module perpendicular okay or if i want to install uh, i want to make it suitable for the winter then actually i have to have angle like this so that it is perpendicular okay so the angle of the module even if it is fixed to collect the highest amount of solar radiation in the afternoon will also change and it will change as per the season and you know from your experience that in the summer sun is uh, sun comes to the overhead position therefore the module should be nearly flat or at some angle in the winter sun actually becomes what we call in our hindu calendar become dakshinayan so therefore sun the module has to face towards the south okay it has to face towards the south and that angle uh, will always be with respect to now i'm 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 trying to give the angle with respect to horizontal so this is the so this is the angle of installation so it will be 90 minus phi plus minus delta this is the angle of installation for a given location on a given day okay now the phi is fixed okay your value of phi is fixed but your delta is changing every day okay so in the next lecture we will learn how the delta is changing okay the delta changes from 0 to plus to 23.45 it goes to minus 23.45 and again becomes 0 so in the next lecture we will actually calculate what is the value of delta and once we do that we can actually find out what is the optimum installation angle of a module so that you collect the best possible solar radiation on the afternoon so this will continue in the next lecture uh, uh, i hope uh, when you go back home today in the evening please go through the slide and try to understand uh, the sun earth movement uh, uh, the concept of air mass uh, the concept of uh, uh, equinox and solstice and the concept of uh, the motion of sun in a given plane and the fact that sun the plane is fi angle of the plane is fixed the plane itself moves as per the season and once we know that we can actually find out what is the best possible inclination of a module so that you can collect most amount the solar radiation in the noon time and because the value of delta is changing every day your angle should also change every day but that is not possible and we'll see what what we can do so i'll stop here uh, uh, for the second lecture thank you very much and uh, uh, i'll take some more questions uh, before we break for the lunch nit surat can you ask question if there is any question hello yeah yeah sir if we install our uh, solar power plant on a water bed the impact of temperature will increase the efficiency of the power plant yeah i, I got your question so wait for a couple of more lectures and you will get the answer
Hello, Jabalpur. Uh, sir, I am asked a good question. The, the cost of the solar plant installation is much more. The cost capacity factor is the solar is very low. So how can, how can generate a efficient way to generate per unit cost? How can you reduce the per unit cost using this method? Okay, uh, so the in order to reduce the per unit cost, uh, of course you want you should uh, want try to collect as much radiation as possible. One way of do, uh, collecting the more radiation is actually take your modules as per the moment of the sun. Okay, so if you keep your modules perpendicular to the sun all the time, then you are going to collect more uh, radiation. But so that will increase your capacity factor of the plant. So normally without tracking, your plant capac capacity factor is about. 0.151617, but if you do the tracking, your capacity factor can increase to 0 0.2, 0 0.2122. 2, 2, 2. Okay, one last question, uh, Varangal. Hello, sir. Sir, my question is that uh, in every season, can we put our mo module normal to the sun always? Is that is possible, sir? To get the more efficiency of the radiation? Yeah. Yes, it is possible to put your modules normal to the sun in all the conditions. The only problem is that your module has to be changing its position all, all the day throughout the season and that mechanism either you can do manually or you can have a, you know automatic arrangement to do that and moving the modules actually aids to the cost of the system. And many times people find that the tracking solutions which are available commercially right now are not so uh, cheaply available and therefore if you look at the all the power plant that are established in India right now are not actually of movable type, they are fixed. But yes, if you move the module uh, all the time, uh, definitely you will get more energy and people have shown by calculation that if you continuously follow the sun in the two axis, you can actually get about 30 to 40 percent extra electricity. Okay? Thank you to all of you. See you, goodbye.